And on this third episode, we discuss about the block. Now, of course, all the details that we do in assembling a good engine, prepping all the tidbits and all the whatnots, and even checking the crank and show you guys that the crank is perfectly fine, inspected and checked, and of course, update you guys on the port matching of the head and cleaning up the exhaust and show you how the manifold ended up being like this and of course dropping some golden nuggets of attack for you guys leading to a goal of even better efficiency that gives excellent fuel consumption or mileage and definitely some power so let's go Right, here we are and you can see because the owner always used coolant look at the outer sleeve it's clean right okay now let's look at the underside the main saddle look at that the main bearing saddle it actually looks brand new right i mean there's no unusual marks by the bearing being pounded to the mains so that means this car has been used properly and maintained really well nothing unusual right okay now let's go head off to the crank look at this we actually cleaned it up and oiled it so it won't rust and now it's gonna be ready to be checked because the means are looking good we're gonna check just for the crack test we're just gonna show you guys because we know this isn't cracked but hey let's show you guys wait oops wait you hear that? That's quite long, right? See? Again. Yeah. Yep. So when there's a hairline, even just a hairline crack, that ring, the ringing sound is not going to be that long. It's going to be short. And also here, look at the mains and the rod journals. It looks really good with no unusual marks. So there is no need to check it with a micrometer. Plus, we're still going to keep it all OEM on the main bearings and rod bearings. You can see on the background, there's a box of the bearings. Yeah. All right, back to the block. One important thing that we do, and you have to do this, is that after cleaning the block with solvent and all that, the threads are dry so when you tighten the mains it creaks or squeaks and to avoid that and so that it doesn't confuse the torque readings we run through all the mains into the threads we hand tight them all the way of course fully oiled with assembly lube or 30 weight oil so we're gonna do this now okay we just hand tight you know because you just need the thread to get past with oil you know all right there you go and then of course wait all right and of course we gotta time lapse the rest of the things because it's gonna get boring as usual all right there you go all right then the next one all right yeah okay Wait, that's one. You can't find the other one. Okay, let's remove it for now. All right. Now it's, the threads are no longer bone dry, so it's going to be good. So full disclosure, the missing bolt is probably at the bottom of the small barrel or small can that we use to rinse all the bolts clean. It's filled with diesel and kerosene, so I kind of don't want to dip my hands there trying to get it from the bottom. So we'll show you guys later on when it's complete, but hey, just, you know, just letting you guys know. Okay, and before we head to the cylinder head, 
of course subscribe and hit the bell notification if you guys haven't this way you guys will always be updated whenever we put up good stuff and new stuff of course and hit the like button this way the video gets spread out to a wider audience so our community can keep growing let's go all right okay now let's continue as we mentioned earlier, we're just gonna port match the manifold into the head. So we just ported or we just smoothed out the entry of the intake ports. This way, the port matching is gonna be really, really good. And what we did was we bowl blend or ported a bit or, you know, smoothed out the throat or the bowl. This way, it's kind of like a type R, a sock type R. Yeah. Okay, here's a closer look as you can see we smoothed out the bowl and the entry was just smoothed out too and as mentioned before the exhaust i was planning to smooth out the whole exhaust port with just a sanding roll not carbide so it's not fully ported because yes you guessed it we're shooting for maximum efficiency not just with power but also we want this engine to actually improve significantly when it comes to gas mileage because the owner actually does check its kilometer to, to a liter consumption so hey let's surprise him with a good consumption now let's head back to the block and start installing the main bearings and then hopefully the crank okay we got the main studs removed or the main bolts we have to actually you know what being clean when it comes to assembling the engine is really really crucial trust me on that okay so we're gonna wipe this make sure it's really clean and of course be careful not to leave like a debris or leftover of the tissue or whatever you're wiping it with okay now let's start with the number one main bearing all right okay we click it good all right wait let's make sure it's really in snug and properly all right okay now we have to time lapse this okay wait gotta remove the bearing okay i'm gonna show you guys the saddle before we actually put the bearing so that you'll never see it again look these saddles look literally brand new right yeah all right now let's install the bearings okay it's just that quick you know all right so look at this yep it's waiting for the crank so the block is saying come on come on all right let's go and of course the assembly loop the torco assembly loop all right we're gonna put a little bit just a little bit and then some oil this way it spins lightly we're gonna show you guys all right here the crank and of course the saddle you know groove outside you know you don't want to spin any bearings all right we oil the top now we prep the main girdle all right and then there all right after hand tightening it snug let's go with the first step the first step being 18 feet pounds torque all right yeah all right and then after this we go with the time lapse all right yeah okay let's go all right yeah and then now for the final step 38 feet pounds torque all oh, click is louder now yep okay and there we go fast and time lapse yep pardon the missing bolt right there we're gonna show you guys later when we complete it so you know nothing's missing all right okay now let's turn it oh see how light that is it spins freely yep even if the bolts are complete it'll still spin freely because you know the clearances are still good and it's straight up oem look at that turns really really good and of course this would mean this engine should run really good right let's hope so now let me show you this on the head because we had this resurfaced 0 0.010 or one fourth millimeter just to get it flat 
you gotta clean up the edges of the chamber like this look let's look at it closer because there's like a what do you call that uh a lip or a ridge because of the resurfacer or while resurfacing the deck let's focus it on oh, there you see that because if you don't clean that up that's gonna glow during the combustion process and that's gonna pre-ignite so hey that's pre-ignition galore or in tagalog tope so sometimes maybe your compression wasn't because wasn't too high that you're pinging maybe it's because the chambers have these ledges those these sharp edges can go really hot can glow so you gotta clean that up to prepare everything now let's look at the status of the intake manifold here you can see we've cleaned up the entry after the throttle we didn't make it any bigger we just added a step and as larry widmer the pioneer of endine said no more than 0 0.020 to 0 0.030 of a step because if it's a bigger step we'll show you later what's gonna happen it's not gonna be good so there you can see it didn't go big right that's still fine all right now let's look at the side of the head on the flange yep there you go we cleaned it up as far as the sanding roll can go that's probably like around six inches deep up to halfway through the runner here so we're hoping this improves flow and which means efficiency goes up yep let us hope because you know this is going to be fun to check after right and the reason for the step i was saying earlier is because if the step is too big it's gonna create ripples like that like an eddy current it's gonna hamper or hinder flow so that's not good now let me show you this this is the black box of the block or at the bottom or at the back it's the breather that goes to the pcv valve and then to the intake manifold it's a one-way valve and look the the hole or the breather to the towards the block is big compared to the vacuum hose look it's tiny right so here's what, what we plan to do put another fitting here so that there's two lines why here honda did an excellent job routing the lines because of the vacuum line here for the pcv it's over here with a one-way valve when the throttle is still closed or on idle it's pulling vacuum removing crankcase pressure so it's crankcase evacuation even up to let's say part throttle before half throttle look it's still pulling it so that is good but anything above half throttle and full throttle because the engine is demanding more air and of course with the air box and the filter there's restriction there's more vacuum on the intake pipe this time vacuum is being pulled from the valve cover from the head so it's still cranky evacuation so when you think about it honda covered everything from the idle part throttle to even full throttle and the reason why we want to put an extra line on the block is because you, you saw earlier the hole from the block is bigger than the vacuum line and plus you know it's not so bad to have ample or a little more vacuum at idle and part throttle hey it might improve fuel economy right and even the full throttle i'm thinking about uh, uh, adding another line but it's gonna be hard so let's stick with the block and so if it's your first time watching this check out the first episode and the second episode because you would actually love this even more because you would see the approach and the plans that we have and actually on the first episode we actually dyno run this or we dyno this before we disassembled it so hey that would be cool right I mean, because we would dyno this once we're done with it. So we, there's a before and after. So, you know, you got to subscribe because there's going to be some more good stuff.